Welcome to Jetfish. My name's Kirk Davis, and this is my show where I take you to meet some pretty cool people in some pretty cool places and have some pretty cool fishing experiences. And I do it all on a wave runner. With a range of over 150 kilometres, I can go anywhere that a boat can go. It's easy to launch, safe and stable enough to stand on one side or fight large fish. I've got all the electronics and storage that any boat would have, and I always carry with me the latest safety equipment. This life's not going to live itself. So hop on now, and let's head off on today's Jetfish Adventure. Right, let's give Pops a call. Good morning. Hey, how you going? Good, mate, good. Good, that weather's looking good. You ready to hit the road? We'll head down the marina and start packing the boat? Sounds like a good idea, boy. Okay. Like a good idea. Where should we go, do you reckon? I reckon we stick with the plan and go to Great Barrier, eh? Yeah, down to Great Barrier, yep. Okay, I'll no, no. It, it's um, all good. Okay, I'll chuck some gear in the car, I'll see you soon. See ya. Wait. Let's do it. Right, off we go. Down to the marina, which is only a couple of minutes away. We're going to load the boat. We're going to load the mothership. Pops is the skipper. He's there with the boat now. Once we've done that, we'll go and launch the ski, and we'll be away. How you going? Good morning, Gregory. All ready to go, boy. Ready to go? Good, nice one, let's go. Right. Great Barrier Island is one of the islands which is the entrance to the Haraki Gulf. So much fish life between here and there, and hopefully a lot of fish life there. The reports are the fishing has been a little bit tricky at Great Barrier recently, so we're going to have a look on the way as well. The advantage of going 100 kilometres is that we're covering a lot of ground, hopefully We'll come across some fish. It's a beautiful day. The forecast is only about 10 knots for the next three or four days. This is going to be it. Riding any distance on a ski is an awesome experience. But when you ride long distances, it is almost a certainty that dolphins will find you and ride along with you. They love to jump and play alongside, as well as just sit under the bow when the pressure wave formed by the wave runner. You never know what you're going to see on one of these trips and this trip would be no exception. Not far from Great Barrier Island, I came across a massive school of surface feeding fish that looked more than a little promising. When Kawai are present in these numbers, there's almost certainly snapper and kingfish there with them. When the fish are feeding like this, they're feeding on the krill, and the krill are just tiny. So what I'm trying to do is I've got this little tassel on the end of the flea, and I'm hoping that that is going to replicate or imitate a little bit of krill. But there's so much food here for them, they're really hard to hook sometimes. Oh, there's one. Fish on. Oh, that's a nice one. These kawai, good size, ocean going kawai. We're right by a reef by Horn Rock. Oh, so they're nice big ocean going fish. Be great in the smoker. Real hard fighters, the kawai. I love catching them on white gear. It's a nice size one. Got 
good. Boy, let's have a look at him. I'm gonna keep him so I can put my hands in his gills. Get that net out of the way. And we'll have a look. You can see there the little flea that he's grabbed. And what these kawa are feeding on is krill. But on the end of the flea is a nice little red and white tiny little skirt. That's what he's chased, that's what he's grabbed. And we've got something for the smoker. It was a great start to the day's fishing to snag a kawai after such a short time fishing on the jet ski. I love it when a day starts this way. With so much top water action here, I decided to stick around and see if there was anything large feeding under these kawai. Here comes the school, it's coming at me. Man, there's a heap of fish there. That's the spot, right amongst them. You've got to think, how can you miss from a spot like this? Look at all these fish, thousands of kawai. There's got to be some big snapper underneath them, just cruising with them. Unbelievable fishing. What a backyard, what a place to live where you can come out and see something like this. Unbelievable. Oh, yep, fish on. Oh, good fish. Oh. Could be a kingfish, this one. It's grabbed it mid water as it was dropping down. Good fish. Still not sure what this is. Digging down deep. Could be a nice snapper. I think it is. Got some colour. We've got some colour, boys. Oh, yeah. That is a nice fish. And that's why I'm following these kawai. Thousands of kawai swimming here. And I've cast the soft bait in, and that is a beautiful snapper. What a beauty, what a fight it was. You could see how much power he had in the fight. It took off like a kingfish midwater, headed for the reef, but we subdued him. We've got him in. Let's get him in, have a look at him, and I think he's gonna be a prime one for the smoker. Oh yeah. How's that for a fish? That's what we travel an hour and a half for. One of these big bad boys on the Atomic Sunrise, 7 inch Atomic Sunrise on a 3 eighths of an ounce jig head. I used the 3 eighths of an ounce just to get it down nice and slowly and that's where he hit it, mid water. Beautiful fish. The trip to the island couldn't have started better. Plenty of dolphins on the way and I've already got myself a decent snapper and kawai for dinner. What a fantastic end to what's been a really varied day. The weather has been fantastic all day. It's forecast to stay like this. Just pulling into Smokehouse Bay now. We'll go in and maybe get some fish on the smoke. Smokehouse Bay at Port Fitzroy is one of my favorite places on the barrier. It was set up years ago by a local guy and I love it. It's only accessible by boat and it's where we headed to smoke our catch for dinner that night. Here we go, the fire started, the smoker's smoking, the fish is in the brine. I'm gonna go get it, get it on here so we can get dinner underway. The morning has dawned calm and clear and I am amping to go. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day on the water, but first things first. Right, before we go soft baiting, I'm gonna show you some of the gear that I use. The rods and reels, the hooks, and the soft baits themselves. It all makes a lot of difference to your catch rate. All right, the first rod I use is the Daiwa Hyper. It's got six kilo braid on, J-Braid, and it's got a Daiwa Saltus Nero 3000. 
Attached to my braid is 20 pound fluorocarbon leader and a quarter ounce light bulb jig here. Quarter ounce because I'm going to be casting right up into the reef and I want it to work down really slowly. I'm going to put a seven inch soft bait on this so it'll just work down nice and slowly. So that's rig number one. On the second one I've got a Daiwa BG3000 again with six kilo braid. 20 pound mono leader, but this time a 3 8 of an ounce jig head. 3 8 of an ounce for a couple of reasons. One is in case I'm fishing a little bit deeper, and two is to give me a variation. So where I'm dropping, if I'm not getting them on the quarter ounce, if it feels like it's taking too long to get down or it's just not getting hit, I've got a different size jig head to try and change it up. If something's not working, I'm a big fan of just changing it up to see what happens. So to rig them, we'll start with this 3 8 of an ounce. In my glove box, it's like a TARDIS. So among all the other stuff I've got in there, I've got a pack of bruised banana Z-mans. I'll get one out, put them back in there. I'm going to rig them. A lot of people say, oh, how do I stop my soft bait getting pulled off the hook? Well, I'm about to show you. The Z-mans have a split underneath. So what you do is you go through the middle of the nose, Make sure you're right in the middle, down and out, come out that split. Push it all the way up to the top, turn it round and then push the hook through so it comes out in the little crease on the top. And that soft bait is now perfectly rigged and ready to be cast. So remember this is my slightly heavier one. It's one eighth of an ounce heavier. Slightly heavier. We'll put that on there. And that's the bruised banana. So the bruised banana I use when the conditions are a little darker. So if I'm fishing in the dark, in a dark or a shady area, which we'll try and be fine today, then the bruised banana will be my go-to bait. I do the same on the other rod with an Atomic Sunrise seven inch Z-Man on a quarter ounce light bulb jig head and we're ready to go. We've left our overnight anchorage of Smokehouse Bay and we're going to head out now around the top of the barrier to see what the barrier's got to offer. After such a wicked day yesterday, I was itching to keep momentum and I soon found a spot that looked fishy casting into the wash, it's all about movement, it's all about looking for where the sea is bashing against the rocks, it's aerating it up, keeping that soft bait moving. People say to me, what are you looking for when you pick a fishing spot? Well, what I'm looking for here is it's coming up out of the deep from 20 metres, it's coming right up onto the rocks, it's breaking, there's a bit of a swell breaking on the rocks, and it just feels a little bit fishy, it's coming off we're on the northern side of the barrier, so it's coming off some big open sea. And if I was a big snapper, this is where I'd be coming into as my first port of call to hang out. Put something right in the wash. Not a big one, but it's a start for the day. Nice little reef snapper to start the day's wash fishing. always be in touch with your line. If you're not in touch with your line, you'll either miss the bite or you'll hook the bottom. I can see the touches just in that little bow in my line. I can just see them just giving it a touch. I'm keeping it a little bit loose deliberately so that they can take it a little. Get lots of little toothy fish fishing a reef system like this. So the Z-mans are perfect because they don't get pulled apart other soft baits will just get chewed to bits by the leather jackets and anything else with the sharp teeth. But the Z-Mans are very resilient. I love them. And fish on. Oh, fish off. The exposed shallow coastline wasn't doing it for me, so I decided to move on. And it didn't take long to get some action. Oh, nice fish. Oh. 
nice fish. He just grabbed it. Oh, yeah. Took off with that. Pulled in here into the shade. Because it wasn't working in the shallow and the sun, so I've come out a bit deeper. It comes up out of 30 metres. And this is a good one. Oh, no, he's in the weed. Get up, get up, get up. Oh. Yep, here we got colour. Here he comes, he's a nice snapper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boy. That's what we've come out here for. What a beauty on the bruised banana. Just managed to keep him out of the weed. He was a hard fighter. Oh yeah. And that's about a six kilo, five and a half kilo fish. 12 pounds, a real nice one. One that makes these journeys worthwhile. We're gonna keep him for the smoker. And that is a beautiful five, five and a half kilo snapper. Switch to the bruised banana on the three eighths of an ounce light bulb jig head. And that's the result. That's more like it. Still buzzing from landing that nice snapper, I continued to prospect new spots around the island in search of the so far elusive monster. Oh, fish on, oh, nice fish. Big fish, big fish. Yeah. On this week's Jetfish Adventure, I'm at Great Barrier Island, more than an hour by water from Auckland, and the fishing is good. Oh, fish on, oh, nice fish. Big fish, big fish. And I'm hooked up to something big that has my little diver reel singing like your nana. Oh, this is a big fish. Could be a kingfish or a really big snapper. Oh, it just grabbed it and ran. Wasn't even gonna fish here. I think it's a big kingfish. Oh, it's a kingfish, I'm not sure how big. Man, if it's a snapper though, it is a monster. This is a big fish. It's gotta be a kingfish. Just the way it's behaving, it's run out from the reef. It's now just sitting there. It's sitting there using its weight. And there is a lot of weight there. Oh, this could be a big battle. Oh. Busted me. That was a nice fish. It was just, I'm on six kilo gear. Man, it had me in some real gnarly terrain. 20 meters, 25 meters deep. You saw how it took off. Oh well, that's fishing. Luckily for me, there were plenty more fish in the sea. Fish on, fish on. Oh yeah, nice one. Here he comes. It's a nice five pound snapper. Right, well it's just a foul hook trevally, but it felt so heavy because he was hooked in the side. Great sashimi, the trevally. So I think that's gonna go on the menu for tonight. Oh, thought it was a bit of a funny fight. Right, let's get him in and have a look at this. This is a new species for the trip and a big one for this species. I have to say, it's the biggest one I've ever caught. Look at that, big kelp dwelling reef fish. With plenty of fish caught, it was time to put away the rods for a bit and see what else Great Barrier Island had to offer. One of the things I love to do when I'm out fishing a new location is to actually explore the destination itself. It's so easy to explore an island like this on the Wave Runner. Great Barrier is a massive island and we'd had a good fishing session, so I decided to go for a cruise to see what else I could find. This is why I love the Wave Runner. I can get up close to places that I'd never get near in a boat. Everything is accessible, including these amazing caves in the cliff face. Little bait fish over there, this little meow meows. Look at it. Looks like we're in a fish tank. After a day of fishing and exploring, it was almost time to head home. 
This trip to Great Barrier Island has been something special, and I thought it couldn't get much better. Man, was I about to be proven wrong. A big pot of whales here just cruising around. Birds on top of them. They're rounding up some bait or something. I think they're pilot whales or false killer whales. I'm not an expert on whales, but man, they're everywhere here. As far as I can see, there's just whales crashing out of the water. There's got to be 15, 20 of them, as far as the eye can see. They've taken me in as one of their own. We're now just cruising slowly on one of the pack. How wicked an experience is this to do on a wave runner? We all live on the same planet, but when you come out on a wave runner, it's a different world. Imagine how it feels. You can probably hear it in my voice to get this close to creatures like this. Man, I am buzzing. Oh, 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 oh. 